Hey guys, I'm making a video here uh, reviewing the Cold War for your test. It's coming up and uh, this is all the important information that uh, you'll need to know on the test. Uh, so the biggest thing is the, for an overview of the Cold War, we're talking about the United States versus the USSR, the Soviet Union. Soviet Union, communist government, dictatorship led by Stalin. Uh, the United States is a democratic government. Uh, has a capitalistic society. Uh, the United States uh, during World War II was allies with both China and the Soviet Union. However, after World War II, those alliances kind of went away, uh, especially since China became communist. Uh, the Soviet Union was already communist. Um, the United Nations was created primarily to promote conditions that would support world peace. The United Nations was all countries coming together, trying to prevent uh, another world war that we had just gotten out of. The Marshall Plan. The Marshall Plan was when the United States uh, provided money to countries in Europe and across the world that were fighting against communist and the goal was to contain communism not letting communism spread uh, after world war ii germany is broken up into east and west germany uh, soviet union is given control of eastern germany and inside of eastern germany is the capital of berlin uh, the Soviet Union and the United States and the other allies had agreed that the United States and the allies could use roads and railroads and canals in order to move uh, supplies into their sections of Berlin because Berlin was also broken up into four sections, uh, an East Berlin and a West Berlin. West Berlin in char uh, was controlled by the allies, uh, United States, France, and Great Britain, while East Berlin was controlled by the Soviet Union. Well, Stalin got worried that the Allies and the United States was trying to force themselves uh, to take over Berlin. Uh, so he wants to force them out, so he blockades uh, Berlin and doesn't allow the railroad, the trains, the cars, the convoys, the boats on the canals to get through and get supplies into uh, West Berlin. Um, as a result, the United States and the Allies decide to fly supplies into Berlin using airplanes. This is called the Berlin Airlift. In the United States, people were deathly afraid of communism. We were afraid that our neighbors were communists. We were afraid of communist spies. We were afraid that communism was going to get inside the United States and destroy us from the inside. This fear of communism created a climate of suspicion throughout the nation. Uh, those suspicions kind of came into fruition, kind of had some truth to it, uh, when Ethel and Julius Rosenberg were arrested and charged with selling atomic secrets to the Soviet Union. Uh, they were both executed for their crimes, but it kind of justified to people that we needed to be afraid of communists because communists were working to destroy the United States from within, uh, inside the government. We get involved in a, a war in Korea, the Korean War. We have North Korea, which is communist backed by the Soviet Union and backed by China, invades South Korea. That's the democratic part of Korea. Um, they South Korea is backed by the United States. The biggest thing from the war is you need to know that despite the North Koreans uh, at first winning the war and then the South Koreans and the NATO troops winning the war, or, you know, started to win the war, and the end of the war, the line dividing North and South Korea wasn't much different. Neither side gained much territory as a result of this war. Uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis happens during the Cold War. This is United States versus Soviet Union, and Cuba gets involved. Cuba is a country uh, 90 miles off the coast of Florida. Uh, the Soviet Union uh, builds missile sites inside of Cuba with the permission of the communist leader, of Cuba, Fidel Castro, who came to power in 1959. Uh, the, for the United States, these missiles are just way too close to mainland USA. Uh, the missiles they find 
uh, have the potential to reach pretty much every city except cities in the very northwest corner of the United States. Uh, the crisis ends when the United States and the Soviet Union reaches a compromise and they both agree to uh, back off. The United States had blockaded Cuba, refusing to let Soviet ships inside. The Soviet Union agrees to remove the missiles in exchange for the blockade ending uh, in Cuba, as well as the United States secretly agreeing to remove uh, to remove missiles from Turkey, which were located uh, very close to the Soviet Union. That's the Cuban Missile Crisis. Vietnam War, we get into involved in a war, same thing as Korea. We're fighting to stop the spread of communism. We do not want communism to spread. The war was difficult in Vietnam because uh, even though we had better technology, only a limited war was fought and there was no front line. It was very difficult to distinguish friend from foe in Vietnam. Also, it was fought in the jungles of Vietnam. Very, very difficult to see the Viet Cong uh, who were the communists who were fighting to take control of Vietnam and turn Vietnam into a communist country, had created a elaborate system of tunnels uh, throughout the jungle, and they would use guerrilla warfare, small hit-and-run attacks. They would disappear into the jungle, disappear into the tunnels, and the United States had a very, very difficult time fighting this war. At home, the Vietnam War was very unpopular. Many Americans criticized the war because it was a war that really had nothing to do with us. We were just trying to stop communism. The North Vietnamese didn't especially hate the United States. They hated that we got involved in this and that we weren't letting the country just be taken over by the, the communists. But really what it was was a civil war inside of Vietnam. It was North Vietnam versus South Vietnam. It really had nothing to do with the United States. And that was a constant criticism coming from anti-war protesters during the Vietnam War. Uh, other protesters argue that too much money was being sent to another country. That money could have been spent at home in the United States, helping people in the United States, and that too many of our soldiers were dying without much success towards our war goals. Similar to Korea, where, where it just kind of developed into a, a stalemate, that's exactly what was kind of happening in Vietnam. Eventually, the communists take over Vietnam, uh, we lose the war, we pull our troops out, and it's just kind of a, a black eye on America that we weren't able to accomplish our goal in Vietnam. Uh, but after that, uh, so, uh, some new guys come into power in the Soviet Union, um, and these new leaders of the Soviet Union begin a policy of detente, which is easing of tension between communist and non-communist countries, the signing of the Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty, or known as SALT, it was the first time the United States and the Soviet Union agreed to limit their military power. They were limiting the number of nuclear warheads that each country was creating. President Nixon of the United States visited China in 1972. This eased tension in China. Uh, it also uh, made the Soviet Union a little jealous and a little suspicious of the United States becoming better allies with China. And so after Nixon's visit, the Soviet Union actually invites Nixon to come and to discuss, you know, limiting the military, limiting the number of uh, nuclear warheads that each country possessed. Another treaty was signed in 1987 by United States President Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev. Gorbachev is cre uh, credited with uh, greatly reducing Cold War tensions and making sweeping changes to the Soviet Union. Um, and through this process, the Cold War tension, the height of the tension that happened during the Cuban Missile Crisis, kind of relaxes a little bit. The Cold War finally ends in the early 1900s as the Soviet Union uh, faces inner turmoil and breaks up uh, countries that uh, were controlled by the Soviet Union, become independent countries, and in Berlin, specifically the Berlin Wall that was built by the Soviet Union to separate East and West Berlin comes down. That's kind of very symbolic of the end of the Cold War. So this was a real quick overview of the Cold War, just the meat and potatoes, as you'd say, the main ideas that you need to know in order to do well on this test. 
Hope this helps. Watch this video as many times as you need. See you guys later.